This is the second video in a series on using Google Docs just for beginners. And um, we're going to cover in this video working with fonts and how fonts look and selecting text and using tools within the word processor to cut, copy, and paste text. I also want to um, show you how to undo mistakes and to redo things that um, you might have accidentally undone. Okay, so um, we are going to access our Google Docs from our Clever portal. And there's a button icon that looks just like this, where you can launch your Google Docs right into a new window. Now, it's good to note that anytime you're um, using your computer, you don't have to use the Clever portal to get into your Google Docs. You can just be logged in with your Google account and go to the waffle. Oh, there we go. And there's an icon right on the waffle that will launch Google Docs along with lots of other Google um, apps and services that you may use. So um, like, for example, your email or your Google Drive or the calendar. All right. So if you click on Docs from the waffle, it will also go right to the same screen. All right, so I'll go back to the one I opened a minute ago from Clever. And we had in the first video started a new Google Doc called Google Docs Demonstration. And in that video, we had um, talked about how you can start a new document using this row of templates. The most common one that um, we use to start a document is just the blank template. It doesn't do anything except very basics um, of setting up the page for you. But there are other templates you may use um, here in the future. But we're not starting a new document. We want to work on a document we already started and worked on. So below the templates, it shows all the Google Docs that you have saved in your Google Drive. And the one we started for um, demonstrating Google Docs in our first video happens to be the very first one right here. I can tell because we named it with a good meaningful file name, Google Docs Demonstration. So to open it back up and keep working on it, all I need to do is use my mouse to click on it. And it'll open right up in my web browser and I can start editing it. So I mentioned that we were going to be working a lot with fonts in this particular video. Um, right now, you can see on our toolbar what font properties we have. Our font style or face is called Arial. Our font size is 11. And we're not using any of the decorations. Okay, And if I just move my cursor around in the block of text, I can see that none of those settings change. So all of what I've done so far is in the Arial font, size 11, and it's just plain, no bold or italics or underline or any other decorations. So let's say I wanted to make a title for my document. So I'm going to put my cursor right at the beginning of the document, very top line, very first character. I'm going to hit enter a couple of times, move my cursor back up to the top, and I'm going to create a title. And I'll just call it Google Docs Demonstration Document. All right, but titles, a lot of times, are bigger and bolder than the rest of what's typed in the document. So let's see how I can make that font bigger. I'll take my mouse and click at the beginning or end. It doesn't matter whether you um, start with your click at the beginning of the text you want to change or the end of the text you want to change. And I'll just swipe across it, holding the mouse button down. And when I get to the part that's on the other side of the section I want to change, I'll just let go of my mouse button. And it's now selected, we call it, when it has that um, highlight around it after we've dragged our mouse on it. So whatever I do next is going to change only this part of what I've typed. I said I wanted to make it bigger, so I'm going to go to the font size button right here on my toolbar, 
and change it from 11 to a bigger number. Let's try 18. That's pretty good. Um, we could also make it bold so that it really stands out. All right. That's pretty good. Now, I can also change the way the font actually looks, what we call the face or the style of it. And I can do that by changing the font itself in the toolbar. I've selected a section of text I want to change to a different font and I will click on the font list and I can choose any font in this list and it gives you a nice little preview of what the font might look like. Um, so here's one that looks like permanent marker like a sharpie. Okay, and maybe we can see how it looks a little bit better if we make it bigger temporarily. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And if we um, wanted to change the color of our Sharpie marker, we could click on this button on our toolbar right here. It looks like an A with a um, bold underlined color underneath it. That color tells us right now our font color is black. But if we click on it and choose a different color, maybe blue, see how that changes to blue and it tells us what our current font color is. And if I click to remove the selection highlight, now I can see what it looks like. So I have a big Arial 18 bold title. And I have a section that's in the permanent marker font size 24 and blue and then I have another section that is just in the um, original type that uh, we started with which was RL 11 point without any decorations okay so I could change let's see what would be interesting to do with this one maybe I'll make it um, who what's a good one how about lobster it kind of looks like um, what they call cursive writing when you do that. And let's make it red just for fun, like a, a lobster. Okay. Now there are some other um, decorations we can give to our text. Like maybe we want to um, underline part of it. So it really um, draws the person reading your document to that section of text and has them read it carefully all right so i'm gonna select i hope you enjoy it and learn from it i'm gonna underline it with the u on the toolbar okay um, we did bold italics is when you take a section of um, your type and you make it look slanted Okay, so I've typed, this is italics type. I'm gonna select it. And if I hit the I on the toolbar, it makes it slanted compared to how it usually looks. Okay, and I could put a demonstration of each of my different decorations. Say this is bold type, and I'll change that to bold. And I have my italics, and I'll do this is underlined type, and select it and hit the underline. But I have my italics on for that section, so I'm going to turn that off. So this is only underlined. And that's a good point. We can combine the different de decorations. So we could say this is bold, italics, underlined, type, and then swipe it and make sure all three of those decorations are on. Underline's already on. I'll do italics and bold. All right. Now, let's change those to a regular black default type color. And I want to show you a tool called the highlighter, which is just like using a highlighter marker in your book or on um, 
notes that you might take or on homework that you might do. Okay, so I can take a section that I want to highlight as if I were highlighting it with a marker, select it, and then use this button, highlight color. And you know, a really popular highlight color is yellow, so I'll, I'll do that. All right, and when I click off of it, you can see it's just like a highlighter marker swiped over it. Another really popular one is kind of a blue, greenish blue color, like uh, or a light blue like that. Okay, so that's how you can highlight. So let's say um, I want to do another line of text that, it, that demonstrates the highlight without the, the, um, the bold or the italics being highlighted. This is where my undo button comes in. Okay? This little arrow pointing backward is called undo, and it reverses whatever the very last thing you did is. So this, when I click it, should take the blue highlight away. Okay? It reselected it because when I put the highlight on, it was selected. So now if I click out here, you can see it no longer has the blue highlight. And if I undo again, it will undo the yellow highlight. So now I can hit enter. And right now if I type, we can see that we'll have bold, italics, and underline turned on. So you don't have to change your decorations after you type something. You can um, set up the way your um, type will be decorated before you start typing it by just setting each of these the way you want. And we wanted to do just black text with some kind of highlight. Let's choose a uh, orange highlight. That's another popular highlight color. This is highlighted text. Okay. So those are the basics of how to change the way your fonts look in your document. What if you wanted to repeat something? Um, let's say that I wanted to take this whole block showing examples, and I wanted to make slightly different examples, maybe with a different font face or colors or things like that. Well, I can swipe over, select the entire block, and I can click on Edit and Copy. Go to a new line where I want that block to be repeated, and go to Edit and Paste. And there we go. We have that whole series of type, that whole block of type repeated a second time. And it's a little too big, so um, and it's going over the page. So I'm going to find a way to, let's maybe make some of this a little bit smaller font so it all fits on one page. Okay, so let's change it all to um, 18 and see if that gives us some more room to work with on the page. Perfect. Okay, so I don't want the second section to be an exact duplicate of the first section. Let's change the entire... Um, face of that block to Calibri, which is a very popular um, font to type in for um, documents like schoolwork. And then change the color to blue and the highlight to uh, red. Ooh, that looks terrible. So let's try a different color. Change the highlight to um, yellow. Ah, much better. Okay. So that is how you can use copy to repeat something. Now, what if I wanted to totally move it? Okay, if I wanted to totally move it, I could take the block of text I want to move, highlight it, and then do edit, Cut. That will cut it out of the section I take it from, but it'll allow me to put it somewhere else by pasting it. There it is, right there. All right, so here's my document.
So a lot of times when we're done with a document, we want to share it with other people. A lot of times that's the whole reason we created the document. So Google gives us a very useful little uh, tool here to share with others. It's right in the upper right hand corner of the window. It's a big blue and white button that says share. We can click on it and then in the box underneath people, we can start typing the name of someone from our contacts that um, we want to send the document to and share it with them. So let's say we wanted to share it with Johnny Appleseed. I'm going to start typing his last name, Apple. And see, it searches through our contacts list and gives us his email address and his name. And all we need to do is click on it and then decide whether we want him to be able to edit the document with us or only give us comments or only view it. So I only want Johnny to view mine. So I'm going to click can view and then I will send that email off to him. And that's all there is to it.